All right, this is my uh, Vons 1 7 scale F104. It's going to be EDF powered. Uh, I tried to take a few pictures to show kind of the internal workings to date, uh, but it became a lot more complicated. So I thought I would take a quick uh, video tour. Uh, so I apologize in advance for the amateur level of this video, but let's take a look. So right now I just have the um, receiver pack laying in the inlet. This will be located for balance later. So let's take a look inside. So quickly inside, we got the air tank mounted up top and plumbed over, you know, through the valves. We got a UP2 and a UP4 valve. The main gear doors close when the uh, gear is up and down, uh, yet the nose gear doors stay open. So, got a couple of valves in there, receiver. You see it's a little, uh, little bit of a mess, so. Have the details for scale afterburner um, light controller over here. It's not actually hooked up to the controller right now, but it is uh, wired and running. That's what this, uh, this, batter, this um, plug is for. It's for two cell LiPo. Got the uh, on off switch for the receiver air fill tank. I have the um, drag chute and retracts on the same tank. There's a little reset button right here for the drag chute and an arming light to show you that the chute is armed. Let's go around the other side. The other side, there's the uh, details for scale auto chute system and the deployment servo on a button valve so that's how that is set up through the nose it's the nose gear and farther up you can't see it in that picture but there's actually the uh, nose gear steering the nose is meant to come off for transport or storage it's a little cumbersome to get off naturally but it breaks right along this line here I don't know if you can see it or not but right along that line with four bolts so that's what this mess is. These are quick disconnects for the four airlines going up front so you can remove the nose and also there will be a one servo connection for the nose gear steering. Looking back inside through the cable, we've got the cable run of air hoses and um, servo lines. Coming back to the main gear, uh, the flap servos are in the fuselage and drive some torque torque rods right here you can see they're not hooked up yet to the uh, servos themselves but they're in place and those engage the flaps once the wing plugs on this uh, cylinder right here is just temporarily it's uh, to show you the auto chute um, how that works so let's uh, pretend we load the chute and we'll close the cylinder it's a one-way cylinder the auto chute the chute itself will be housed in the back here. You can see I've started working on the door. Uh, that's just held in with some magnets. Let me see if I can push that open. So that's where the chute will come out, right there. And right here on the ground is the, uh, or on the bench, is the, uh, the housing for the chute. So that'll sit inside the fuselage. And then this is the actual air ram that will push the chute out. And there's the chute, it's all folded up. We'll get that out later. And there's the afterburner ring and battery. So that's, that cable still needs to be run up to the front. But let's turn it on and see if it... So we turn the radio on, turn the receiver on. You can hear the afterburner light controller spooling up. There's a built-in fan to keep that cool. It gets very warm with the um, emitter lights in there. You can see the red LEDs lit up. That means that the um, auto shoot system is engaged. I have about 50 pounds of air pressure in here right now, so not a lot. Um, so let's run through quickly. So we, we take off, flying around, and we retract the gear. There's the gear folding up nose gears felt folded up and I have a couple of features to make sure that the auto chute does not deploy while we're flying which would be uh, terrible and probably just break free break loose at the speed we're flying but nonetheless on this switch back here I have an arming I arm the auto chute so I'm flying along I arm the auto chute 
Yeah, if I had brakes, that would probably be the brakes. Um, next thing we come down, we're slowing down, we're slowing down with the throttle. Pull our flaps. This is the flap switch here, two positions. I'll show you the flap servo move. It moves two positions. So now the, the chute needs the arming switch, the flaps down. And we bring the throttle back down to idle, a couple clicks up from the bottom. Now the chute's ready to arm. Coming in, we hit our retracts. Gear comes down. We're setting up for landing. The chute still will not come out until we have some RPM on the wheels. The wheels touch the ground and start spinning. I'll spin the wheel manually and you'll see that the uh, auto chute cylinder will open, pushing out the drag chute. There it goes. You can adjust the sensitivity of the speed. So I have it um, set not so sensitive yet, so I can't spin it with my hand fast enough. But anyway, it engaged this button valve inside the fuselage. So we've landed, we're taxiing back, we raise our flaps up, and then we hit the reset button. And this basically resets the auto shoot servo. You can see it coming off the button valve. It's a digital servo, that's why it's moving like stepping like this. An analog servo would move um, a lot smoother, but nonetheless. And then back here, we reload, we'll reload our chute, but because this is a one-way cylinder, we just push it in. We'll push in as we push the chute in, and then the magnets close the door at the back. So that's about it. I'll show you the front up here. I'll show you the, uh, the button valve work. So we're coming in, we arm the auto chute, flaps are full down, landing position, come down on throttle, and then once we hit the ground, the wheel starts spinning. And you can see that that moves the servo, so that only then will the uh, chute deploy. We'll reset the uh, auto chute. So. That's about it. Uh, I'm sure I'm forgetting something and people will have questions, so feel free to shoot me an email with any questions you have and uh, I'll try to answer them as best I can. Oh, I didn't show you, I knew I forgot something, I didn't show you the uh, RPM sensor on the wheel. I have it on the left wheel. I, right now I just have it temporarily zip tied and in place. But it comes down and engages, picks up two magnets that I've glued on the inside of the the wheel. You can see them there, 180 degrees apart. And I'll paint those flat black uh, so you won't even notice them. But that's what uh, that's what tells the the uh, auto, the auto shoot system that the wheels are turning. So anyway, I hope that's uh, that clarifies some qu initial questions.